What I didn't like. Oh, okay. I put everything with the resistance. <laughs> I, I have the casino scene. That's my didn't like list. Uh, I have, I think That's I, it? That's the only thing you didn't like? The, cas- the whole casino sequence could die in hell. Oh, I agree. I, specifically. I agree. Yeah. Even though, I, and you know what the worst part about that sequence is for me? What? I love Justin Theroux. Oh, he, you know what? He was in The Leftovers. Oh, my God. I, I love, love The show. Leftovers. I watched that uh, that last year. Is, that is one of my favorite TV shows ever. The Leftovers is like one of the only shows that the first season's a little weak. The second and third season, in my mind, are like perfect. Like oh, it agree. is just perfect television. It's amazing. That's actually on my list of stuff to rewatch. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting off track. And so <laughs> I remember sitting in the theater because he shows up and then I'm like, oh, my God. The master code breaker is Justin Thoreau looking awesome in like this classic, like Frank Sinatra style white tux and with this crazy hair. And I'm like, oh my God, Justin Thoreau's in this. And then it isn't Justin Thoreau. Like, well, it is just, he is the master code yeah, breaker. Yeah, it's just a cameo. Just a cameo. Oh, I was, a waste of Justin Thoreau. I was so heated. And then I get Benicio del Toro. Don't get me wrong. I like Benicio oh, del Toro. I, oh, I got a lot to say about him. But him oh, in this movie is terrible <laughs> oh yeah, like that's that's what that's what the thing is it was that like, was a choice he he makes choices that is a guy that makes choices, he does make choices. He does. Uh, he's like stuttering and i'm just like uh, eh, what are you doing dude i remember reading somewhere that in the in the usual suspects have you seen usual of course you've probably oh, seen usual I, it's suspects. been a long time it's been well like in the usual years. suspects his character i can't remember his character's name basically speaks like in an incomprehensible quasi spanish dialect so it's like blah, 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 blah. It, it's, it's it's more nuanced so basically he's he's doing it Again, in this movie. Pretty much, but the, the <laughs> difference is in Usual Suspects, he was not told to do that. <laughs> they gave him, like, actual dialogue and things, and then when they were like, okay, let's do this, he just starts speaking. And, it, and it's just this weird dialogue where, like, this dialect where it's like, some of it's in Spanish, some of it's just, like, gibberish. You can only understand, like, every other word, and they were like, let's do this. I wrote one of my things I dislike. The mo- so I like I said I really like the opening battle, mm-hmm. but then Poe he goes up to the Star Destroyer and he's talking to Hux and he does a your mama joke, <laughs> holding for General <laughs> Hux. I'll hold. I have an urgent mes- message for his mother. I put groan. What the fuck? This is Star Wars. We're doing your mama jokes. What the hell? Uh, you know. I, I I could I could do an episode just talking about Oscar Isaac in this the trilogy. Thing, I don't like his character. I love I get rid of love love Oscar Isaac. I a great actor. I think because you know he's supposed so to die. Terrible. You know he's supposed he to die have. in Force Awakens. He should have when he crash landed lands on yeah. Jakku and he's like missing. Like that was it for him. He was supposed that to die. Been great. And he, like he fought with the I guess the director and the producers and he wanted to live. He has no role in this trilogy. I no I, purpose. Oscar Isaac is a fantastic actor. He's like one of those people that like that I if, if there is a movie and it has Oscar Isaac in it, I will watch that movie. He is awful in these movies. He has nothing to do and I then agree. whatever he does do, he is so terrible at and it sucks. It sucks so much because he is such a good actor but he's just so bad in these. And here's the thing, I don't like the Holdo character. I think she's a bitch. I think she should have just told them what the plan was. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- I mean, clearly everybody on your ship is concerned. Like, what what is the harm in telling them that you're going to jump ship and go to that planet? Like, what is – there's no reason for you not to tell anyone. But here's the thing. Like, Oscar Isaac is an asshole or, or Poe's an asshole. Not, not Oscar an Isaac. Ass- Oscar Isaac, no. I'm sure, is a nice guy in real life. <laughs> oh, Oscar Isaac, we know you're out here listening. Please come on the pod. Here's the thing, like Leia tells him in the beginning, like, "Hey, like, let's let's get out of here," and he's like, "No, we have a chance to destroy a, a dreadnought," yeah. and then he gets so many people killed. Yeah, and he and starts he learns a nothing. fucking mutiny. He learns nothing at the end of this movie. He is the exact same hotshot asshole fighter pilot that he was at the beginning. And here's the thing, 
and I, I was thinking about this while watching the movie and I don't really like to talk about me being in the military, but I'm in the military and, and it's like Oscar Isaac goes up or I keep saying Oscar Isaac Poe goes up to Admiral Holdo and is like, Hey, like what's the plan? Like that's like me going up to an admiral yeah. and saying, Hey, like what's, what's the plan? How are we going to deal with this coronavirus? Well, well, like, Barrett, what the are, hell? Are, Barrett, do you consider yourself a hotshot uh, fighter pilot? Just out of curiosity. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, they, that, that's your problem. This character if you sucks. were a, I hate if, him. No, I'm, I'm saying your character sucks, Barrett. If you were a hotshot fighter pilot, <laughs> I'm sure you'd be going up to admirals all the time. Like, listen here, I want to know what's going on. Like, people don't just do that in the military. Like, he's what's his rank? He got demoted. He gets demoted, so he's like a commander. I also do want to. He say goes up that, to an admiral. I'm no. not. I, I'm not sure the resistance has like a legit military structure. Yeah, they got generals. But that's army. But then they got admirals. Like that's navy. Uh, but don't forget, Jar Jar Binks was a general back. In- <laughs> he was. A- oh, he was. Ooh. So, so I think the Star Wars universe and the and the way they do military structure might be a little bit different than the way that the normal universe does military structure. I wrote this down. First order, contract the resistance through light speed. That yeah. all of a sudden, like that feels contrived. And also, fuel is suddenly an issue in these movies. I don't like that. No, here's the thing. The whole okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it was. Ryan, like we said before, Ryan Johnson. He loved. He had the most fun writing for Luke and Ray yeah. and Kylo Ren. And then when it came to Resistance, he was just like, ah, I don't know what to do. Um, they can track them through light speed now. Uh, so now they have to go to a planet and get a thing that can stop the thing on the ship. That you know, I don't know. I I, just... I think I think the problem with these with these movies in general is if you think about Star Wars, including even the prequels, you have you know four or five like main characters, but they're always together. Like it's it. So like for example, like uh, like Empire Strikes Back. They're pretty much together for most of the movie, and then all of a sudden they separate, and that's when shit starts going wrong. That's when Luke gets his hand chopped off and things like that. This movie is the opposite. Like, like, I, said, like I said earlier, with the fact that at the end of the movie, there's a scene where Poe goes, hi, I'm Poe, and she goes, I'm Ray," because they have <laughs> yeah. not met. It's, it's, the end it's, of the, it's in the second movie of a trilogy, and, and two of our main characters haven't met yet. That's yeah, it, it's, it's insane, and it's so odd to me because – in all the other Star Wars movies, you know, in, in the in the in the originals, Han, Luke, Leia, Chewie, R2D2, C three PO, they're all together. Like yeah. there's a little bit when they're not together, but once they come together, they're kind of there. And then when they separate, that's when shit gets bad. And the prequels are even the same. So, you know, you, you have Anakin and you've got Obi Wan, you've got Padme, and they're always together, just chilling. And then this move and this series, and then in this series, like now they've got all these different things. What they should have just done is they should have just basically deleted the resistance storyline. Here's the figured thing. out a way to bring the Luke, Ray, uh, Kylo Ren stuff, and just have that stuff happening at the same time and in the same place that everyone else is. Well, here's the thing, Finn. I th- okay, first movie, Force Awakens. I like Finn a lot. I, I think his character is cool. Yes. He's got a great story arc. Yes. And I like the idea of a stormtrooper basically like defecting to yes. the, to the um, rebellion. Agreed. And, you know, he's kind of a chicken, but then he like kind of at the, at the end, he kind of like stands up to the, you know, the first order. Uh, okay. Like his, his story arc is over. He has no purpose in this story anymore. I, I almost feel like maybe they should have killed Finn off. That probably would have pissed some people off, but I, I, I he, I mean, it's Ray's story now. I, I mean, it's not Finn. There's nothing for Finn to do, really. I think, and and it's very frustrating because of the fact that one that 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 the Finn, you know, I remember once again the trailer is what sticks in my head from what I loved so much about Force Awakens when he goes and he takes off the helmet and he's covered in the sweat. And yeah. after, you know, they've just massacred everyone and he's like freaking out. Like it's it's very frustrating because uh not just the actual plot of Star Wars is about wasted potential, 
the actual movies like <laughs> and the characters Especially all about wasted trilogy. potential where it's it's like setting stuff up and they and with this trilogy especially they set up too much so they can only pay off certain things and so what happens is you're left with potentially interesting stuff that's gone by the wayside all right i have to bring this up okay okay so leia's on the bridge the bridge blows up and then <laughs> leia is floating in space and then she uses the force to push herself to the door yeah uh, this is this is really stupid. It looks dumb. She looks like Mary Poppins. So the first time I saw this, oh I my agreed God. with you. It was one of my least favorite moments in the whole thing. When I watched it this time, I'm in. Here's my thing. I mean, there's no limits to the force, basically. It's pretty much you can do anything with your... You yeah. know, I, I have a problem with that. I feel like there needs to be some checks and balances. I feel like, I feel like the Jedi are way too powerful in these movies like th- th- this trilogy i mean they, well, there has to be some kind of limit to their powers i mean they're almost like invincible well like all the checks and balances on the force not to get back into expanded universe stuff but that's really where they all come from is the the stuff that they did after because in the original movies the force is just magic and in the prequels like it's basically kind of just magic the prequels are more about lightsaber fights than getting into the force and I so just like, think it's it's silly looking. Oh, I, I I'm not gonna agree. Like, <laughs> I I when I rewatched this, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm not oh, gonna lie about it. that. Uh, my thing was, is I wonder if I enjoyed it so much because I appreciate it more, or because I'm looking at it through the lens of how much I did not enjoy Rise of Skywalker. Oh, well, Rise of Skywalker has a lot of controversial uh, force abilities, which that's a that's an episode <laughs> for another time. Yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like okay, it's like if they can just float through space and stuff, like, well, then where's – okay, what, what's the point? What's the tension? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, oh, and then she goes to the door, and then they open the door? Like, wouldn't they get sucked out? I wrote that. <laughs> nah. That part, the second part, it's not really that big of a deal. But like, uh, it feels like that's the biggest part where you were. That's the part that really bothered you. <laughs> All right, I'm not a fan of floating Leia. I, I basically this everything with every time it cuts to the resistance, I just check out. Like the long, boring, slow chase through space, that they're slowly getting picked off. I mean, to me, that feels more Star Trek than Star Wars. Mm, yeah. Star Wars should, to me, Star Wars works best when it's the original trilogy or even force awakens when it's, it's quickly paced, you know, Finn and Rose, the Canto bite scene, they get arrested for illegal parking. That, it, that seems extreme. Maybe a parking ticket. I think that's supposed to be the joke <laughs> that they get arrested for illegal parking. It's not a funny joke. <laughs> yeah. I put Canto bite. I'm with you. I hate that subplot. Yeah. It sucks, but I will say I do like the creatures and stuff. Yeah, uh, I w- I, one of the things I wrote down, that something I didn't write it down, but it just reminded me. Uh, I like the scene a lot where they go to the stables and the creatures poke over their heads and like the, they look at each other. And it's like this really nice silent scene. You see the scars from like the things that they're using to ride these creatures. And then they open it and there's Broom Boy sitting there. Oh, fucking broom boy. <laughs> and there's broom boys sitting there and they're like, don't press the button. Like, I actually really like that scene. Like, I thought that there was just like, like a really nice, well done, well acted, like very minimal dialogue, but just like a nice scene inside of what was pretty much terrible. <laughs> Here's the thing. So we've talked about the Vinicio del Toro character. I think his name is DJ. It's not said in the yeah, movie. It's DJ. <laughs> Well, first of all, DJ, like, look, that, like that's the name you come up with for Star Wars. Hi, I'm Hank. Like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give you a DJ. I like to think that he is a DJ, like when he's not code breaking, that he goes and he like you know puts on EDM music at Star Wars parties. Oh my god! And so all that's right. what it is. His name is like DJ thing. lightsaber. <laughs> Here's what I think with this character. The character sucks. We've already talked about it. Mm-hmm. I don't like the performance. 
Okay, so why was he just waiting in a cell? He could have escaped at any moment. Have you thought of that? I just realized that, yeah. Yeah, so they throw him in the <laughs> So he's already in there yeah. when they get thrown in the cell. And then he's like, you guys want to get out of there, out of here? And they're like, nah, dude, fuck off. And then No, just, it would have just made sense. Why didn't they just, you know, because he betrays them eventually. Yeah. And why didn't the Empire just say, well, look, we heard you guys were going to the casino, so we planted him. Like, he was a plant the whole time to lure them into this that would have made more go. sense yeah i put bb8 shoots coins at the guards <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck you BB. i do not like bb8 in this movie uh, well but I, so the coins like i agree with you that it's That's really so stupid, stupid. <laughs> but the reason that it happened is one of is one of the things that made me laugh when it's just the little it's the little gambler and he keeps putting coins in bb8 it gets angry because it's not like pay. He thinks like BB-8 is like a slot machine. Which that character was voiced by Mark Hamill. Did you know that? Oh wow! No. Yeah. Which why does he have a coin slide anyway? <laughs> that is like why should why why I mean why is he even putting coins in him? Like why should he well, even when, be able when to you do put that? when you put the right coin like a little panel opens up and it's like a peep <laughs> show so you can see like his insides. I don't know. That seems stupid. That that is the one thing I will say to people who like defend this movie hardcore. I'm just gonna. Well, BBA shot coins at the guard. Yeah, and, and the casino, uh, and as someone that defends this movie hardcore, the casino stuff is terrible. Yes. Oh, I put this down. You're going <laughs> to... I put, remember the Kylo Ren challenge? That was stupid. Well, what's the Kylo Ren challenge? You don't challenge? remember the Kylo Ren challenge? Okay, there was this thing going around in the internet, Oh, with the like, shirtless, right? Yeah, so there's yes. a scene where, like, <laughs> uh, Kylo Ren, he, he has a force bond with Ray, and they're talking, and he's just like shirtless but like his pants are pulled up yeah and he's really also like high he's also he's like got these like broad shoulder i mean he looks he's weirdly muscled he is very weirdly muscled but like people were going around doing that like taking pictures of like themselves with like i remember <laughs> that their yeah. pants, like their shirt off and their pants pulled up really <laughs> high oh my god i can't believe that was a thing the Kylo Ren challenge and he's so oily that's the other thing yeah he's he, yeah like he's like he's like the rock in every Fast and Furious movie, like that level of oil. Yeah, he's oily. He's like obviously he's in good shape, but like it's almost like he's just too wide. It feels like something Adam Driver fought for. <laughs> like like they were like they were like, look, let's just let's just do this scene. He's like, guys, what if I do it with my shirt off? And they're like, well, Adam. And he's like, God, you know how ripped I got for this? And all you do is you just put me under robes <laughs> and you put me under capes. The world's got to see this. They got to see this man meat. And they're like, fine, Adam, we'll do it. We'll do one take and then we'll do one with your shirt on. And then they did that one take. And Adam's like, I think we got it. We don't need the shirt on take. <laughs> I just can't believe Just remember. The Kylo Ren challenge was a thing. That was uh, that was the lowest point in uh, society. <laughs> oh, Kylo Ren challenge! All right, I put Force Ghost should not have fucking powers. What the fuck? Like Yoda, like I like that scene. That's a great scene, but he uses thunder. He strike. He uses the thunder. He yeah, it's thunder, and it strikes down the 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 tree. Mm -hmm. I guess. That has the Jedi text in it, which is stupid because like Luke was already going to destroy it, but then he forces Thunder down, so that's dumb. And then he actually hits Luke over the head with his like little stick. I mean, like you're a Force ghost, like you shouldn't interact with like real things. I don't know because it's it's when you when I think about Force ghosts and how they use them in the movies they never established that force ghosts couldn't interact yeah but if they could interact what's to say like yoda can't just show up on the battlefield use like his force lightning powers and just like fry a bunch of stormtroopers well, maybe because yoda doesn't need to worry about that he's beyond such material I, I i i to me force ghosts should just show up uh and just kind of give words of wisdom they shouldn't have powers and they double the <laughs> fuck down in the next movie on that oh yeah like luke's fucking grabbing lightsabers and shit it's just <laughs> stupid i put <laughs> i put oh a poor gets stuck to the window i here's the you thing know, i thought that was funny it I was like funny that. but you have a the serious scene and it's undercut by like a joke i don't know i just feel like the humor is very hit or miss and i think it's very inappropriately placed in some scenes 
but that one, that one, I, I don't know. I, it didn't. That was just a little nitpick. It didn't really bother me that much. But I put this. This one did bug me. I think it bugs you too. Rose Rams Finn's ship. So Finn's gonna sacrifice himself. He's gonna like basically destroy that Death Star gun. And I think he, I think I think he should have died. I think it would have given his character some purpose. So basically, she rams his ship. She kisses him. The kiss is awkward because at, it no, is point, such an awkward at no point do they seem like it, it just doesn't seem like Finn is interested in her. Well, it, it also and not even like in the romantic context, it just seems like an awkward kiss. Like it doesn't feel like a real movie kiss, you know? Yeah. Like it, it's very pecky. I put this I put this line is the equivalent of the I like sand. Or I hate sand. It gets cor- it's rough and it gets it's coarse and it, it's mm-hmm. rough and it gets everywhere. I saved you, dummy. That's how we're going to win. Not fight what we hate, but saving what we love. <laughs> I hate that line. It like makes no sense because like you kind of do have to fight what you hate to save what well, you love. I, I think like I said, I think the whole crux of that moment is supposed to be that extension of what the galaxy needs is hope, not war. Like that that he keeps putting forth, you know, with Luke showing up and not actually fighting Kylo Ren and everything like that. But that's it's kinda, not well done. I will it, well, it's so funny because she's as she says this, there's a big explosion yeah. in the background. I did th- one of my favorite one of my favorite things about that is the fact that after the ships hit, the ATATs are just like cool and just keep moving. Like they didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> just they're just like keep moving forward and i just love that like this uh it was just it was that made me laugh and here's the thing like you think there's going to be some like kind of love triangle between like ray and finn and rose and like none of that is followed up on in the next movie yeah it's almost like rise like, of skywalker most of it is about erasing what happened in last jedi yeah yeah that's another episode though but anyway <laughs> We should call it. That should be the title for this episode. That's, That's another, another episode, episode though. <laughs> uh, I don't see. Here's the thing. I think a lot of people hate the Rose character. I don't particularly like her. I was actually kind of okay with her until this scene. This scene just cringy. I think the Rose character has, once again, it has potential. Like, like if, if your idea is we're going to put forth a character that is more interested in, peace and love than war in this star wars universe when everyone else is like we have to kill the empire we have to kill the resistance blah 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 i think that's actually kind of an interesting idea to say well what if, what if one of these characters is more pacifistic let's say all right the next thing i wrote uh you i'm sure you probably love this scene <laughs> i hate it and i think it's just a big dick slap in the face the Luke force projection. I'm not a fan of it. Wow. I think, I really think, well, first of all, if I think they should have saved Luke for the third movie. I think when Ray left the Oct 2, the planet Luke's on, I think that should have been all we saw of Luke for, for this movie. So I, I, I don't like killing him in this movie. It just seems like something you would do in, in the last movie. But... So he's not really there. He faces Kylo Ren, and it's 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 a force projection, mm-hmm. which they're not fooling anybody because his well, hair is full, different. Fool Kylo looks, Ren. It did, well, yeah, it did fool Kylo Ren. <laughs> but like, I'm sitting there watching this. I'm like, okay, like he's like a ghost or something because he one he's got the blue lightsaber. Why doesn't he have the green lightsaber? And yeah. he his like hair is darkened. He looks younger. Like, well, I I don't I don't think it's supposed to be a fool anyone. I think. I think your eagle-eyed viewers such as me and yourself are supposed to be able to go and say, oh, that's weird. He doesn't, he, he has the different lightsaber. He's wearing different clothes. He doesn't look the same. But I think the idea is that's the only way that the Luke Skywalker, the galaxy needed could be there. Like if he showed up as the Luke Skywalker he was now, that wouldn't have been the symbol that they needed. See, here's the thing. I think you could have had him used the force, raised that X-wing out of the water, and showed up for real. I think, I personally, I think it would have had more of an emotional punch if he actually shows up. And the, the point of the scene, the whole point of this scene really is he's buying time 
so the resistance can escape. Yeah. And yeah, maybe if he does show up, like Luke's powerful, but he's not that powerful that he can destroy all those AT-ATs. Yeah. And, but and I, they could have rewrote it where maybe he didn't have to do that. I just think him showing up, well, I, I would have liked that more. Once again, when you look at the themes of the movie, if Luke Skywalker, actual legit Luke Skywalker had shown up, that is already going against the idea that you don't need to be a Skywalker to be a hero. You don't need to be a chosen one. So he shows up and does this thing and he provides hope. What He provides a symbol, the spark that will light the flame that they say a billion times. But he's not there to defeat uh, the First Order. They're going to defeat the First Order. Yeah, yeah. That, that stuff's all, that's great and everything. I just <laughs> also, too, here's the thing. <laughs> and I know you're going to disagree with me. Probably. I uh, this is like the one Star Wars movie that does not have a lightsaber battle, and I I, I was I, I really wanted. Yes, it like, does. The uh, the final battle, not like a duel between like. Oh, between yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah, I I, uh, I was that was one of the things I was looking forward to in this movie was a Kylo Ren and and Luke showdown. Yeah, I just this this was like disappointing to me. I I thought it was kind of lame, and, and and also he's like. It looks really goofy. He's like Kylo Ren swinging his lightsaber, and he's like ducking, and he's like spinning, and it just looks really silly and goofy. And I, I don't know. I, I think you could have gotten the point of the scene across just even better if he showed up personally. But I know you disagree. I do. Yeah, that was a bummer. We already went over Broom Boy. Here's my thing. <laughs> this is the last thing I wrote down. I think my big problem with this movie. I think it wraps up too much. I, and I, I think it, it lacks a cliffhanger. And I think ultimately that proved to be pretty problematic for the next movie. I think, I think they wrapped up too much. I think it, this is, this movie's like oddly structured. It feels like it has two third acts. I think you probably could have ended this movie after the fight in the throne room and, Kylo Ren asked Ray to join him. You know, I think you could have ended it there. That would have been a nice cliffhanger. I also think, I think it would have been very ballsy if Ray joins him. And I think that would have made for an interesting setup for the next movie. Because you got Ray, who's just, you know, she's just got this idea of Luke, who's like this hero, and she meets him, and he turns out to be not what she thought. He basically kind of tells her to fuck off. He's not going to train her. Mm -hmm. And you got Ray who finds out that she doesn't have any parents. She's, she met her hero was let down. Doesn't really have any direction. And I think, yeah, I think it would have been interesting if she actually joins Kylo. Cause Kylo's like, Hey, like I care about you and stuff. Like, I think that would have been interesting. And then maybe, you know, in the next movie, Luke, he has that pep talk with Yoda and he, and he comes to help out the resistance and maybe he tries to prevent, you know, Ray from going down to the dark side. He gets his redemption, so to speak. I think that's what they should have done personally. I think for, you know, you're saying it wraps up uh, too much and that, that's something that I've heard a lot of people say. I think what it does is it wraps up the stuff that, it doesn't wrap up too much. I think it sets the playing field differently than any, than almost any other star Wars movie has been. And that's the thing that frustrates me the most about rise of Skywalker, which is for another episode uh, <laughs> is uh, the fact that this movie ends in such an interesting place that a star Wars movie has never really ended at. Where, you know, even Empire Strikes Back, which probably I think would have probably the, the darkest ending. You know, Luke goes and he falls and all of that finds out Darth Vader's his uh, dad. Spoiler alert. And uh, that still ends with this kind of everything's going to be okay. I like the fact that it that Last Jedi ends with so many question marks in the sense of where do they go from here? The resistance is 14 people now, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the galaxy doesn't believe in them. 
Uh, and but I like the fact that once again, you know, when when I look at the themes in this movie, I am always going to respect and enjoy a movie where a director tries something and fails. And I think and there are some aspects where Ryan Johnson fails in this instead of someone that just comes along and does what has already been done. Like JJ Abrams did in force awakens. I don't know. To me, I just feel like, you know, at the end of this movie, I think JJ Abrams and in Lucasfilm, they were looking at it like, fuck, what do we do? The only thing we're really left with is, well, uh, Kylo Ren's the supreme leader now, and uh, the resistance has to stop him. I mean, that's yeah, kind of all we're left with. And then that's and that's what what else what else would you need? Ray's started to come into her own as a Jedi. Ray now has a broken lightsaber. So what do we do about that? You know, there's and and every lightsaber, there hasn't been a new lightsaber in the galaxy since the, you know, since the pre empire days. So, what do you do about that? And then now, guess what? All of your holdovers, with the exception of uh, Leia, uh, are dead from the original series. So, what do you do about that? Maybe we have to tell a story that relies on these characters that we have spent no time building up. I think what the last, the reason. The Last Jedi ending probably panicked them is they realized how little groundwork had been done to have this trilogy rely on anything beside nostalgia. Well, also not planned out. Yeah. Like before they even hit action on Force Awakens, they should have had this mapped out. And it, yeah, it's they so should have had like a Kevin, me. like a Feige, like a Kevin Feige esque figure. Well, I, that that's what I was thinking. Out. Like get Dave Filoni in there. He did the Clone Wars. Everybody loved that. Um, To me, yeah, I I feel like Kathleen Kennedy's running the show. She's a producer, and she just... But she doesn't seem... She doesn't respect the source material. She probably just doesn't know anything about Star Wars. She doesn't... She's never seemed to me like a a producer that cares about the story. Right. And that's, that's, you know, like, like, like a Kevin Feige mapping out the the overall arc of these things and then enlisting individual directors to make their movie yeah yeah i mean that's pretty much it i, I again we have diff, different opinions I, I i think i don't know i i feel like you needed a big you know obviously empire i don't think this movie i i don't want another empire but i do think this movie needed like a like a, a big reveal or a twist well what this what this movie does well i think the big twist is the fact that ray's parents don't matter well, what do you think about that? I don't I love really it. care that much. I love it because once again, it goes back to the the central three themes that I'm so infatuated with in here, which is you know it, it and once again, you know, you're talking about Empire Strikes Back. That's another moment that takes something from Empire Strikes Back and pushes it in a different way. So instead of the big reveal of, oh, guess what? Actually, uh, the the big bad guy this whole time has been your father. Now the reveal is, guess what? Your parents don't matter. They weren't anyone important. And I, like, there's so many moments like that where it takes key things from Empire Strikes Back and just pushes it a little bit in a different way, which I think, to be honest, is what Force Awakens should have done. If you want to do a, you know, a New Hope-esque kind of thing, you should have gone and said, okay, hey, look, well, this is going to trigger the nostalgia for you, but we're still telling a unique story and we're going to do that. And that's the thing that last Jedi does really well. I think here's the thing. Force awakens to just don't even make her parents a thing. Like don't even introduce the mystery. Yeah. But the thing about it was, is that what is force awakens? It's just a new hope. What does Luke Skywalker care about? The fact that he doesn't know who his parents are. Like it's it's the it's just playing it's setting up your cards and then playing the same hands in comparison to this which goes ahead and you thought you were playing poker but now you're playing go fish. Yeah, I, I that the whole race parent thing doesn't really bother me that much. I I I will say, Snoke. Well, here's the thing with Snoke. We do <laughs> in the next movie. We kind of do. We kind of do get some information on him. It's really lame. But at the time, we didn't know anything about Snoke. I, I did kind of want a little bit of background on him. 
Yeah. I, 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 I actually agree that, on that. That was a bummer. I know a lot of people had theories like, is he Darth Plagueis, you know? Or Yeah, I, I do agree that you set up this big bad and then you kind of go ahead and throw him by the wayside. Like, I, I like the idea that he gets killed, but the fact that he gets killed without knowing anything about who he is, I think is a, uh, is, is a real failure of Force Awakens and Last Jedi. All right. I'm going to go over trivia real quick. Okay. Ryan Johnson said that J.J. Abrams didn't share any long-term plans that he had for the next two movies. So basically, pretty much just confirms they didn't have a fucking plan. Yeah. Mark Hamill said, I pretty much fundamentally fundamentally disagree with every choice you've made for this character. (laughs) Now, having said that, I've got it off my chest and it's my job to do is to take what you've created and do my best to realize your vision. That's what he, he said. does a great job. I think Mark Hamill really kills it in this. Oh yeah. I like him in this movie. Uh, John Boyega apparently expressed disappointment with this movie. The force awakens, I think was the beginning of something quite solid. The last Jedi, if I'm being honest, I'd say that was feeling a bit iffy for me. I didn't necessarily agree with a lot of the choices in that. And that's something that I spoke to Mark Hamill a lot about. We have, we had conversations about it and it was hard for all of us because we were separated. Well, yeah. Uh, Finn doesn't like it. John Boyega doesn't like it because his character has no purpose in the story anymore. Oh yeah. And he mentions the fact that, you know, they're all scattered all over the place, which I think is one of the problems with last Jedi and rise of Skywalker by a greater extent. So Disney decided not to go with George Lucas's story outlines. Good. That feels I, like a good choice to me. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> may, uh, <laughs> Maybe they should have a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I look. I, I I can't say that what Disney did was correct, but I will say that going off of George Lucas's story outlines didn't work well when they did that in the prequels. So, Here's the thing um, with the prequels: you take George Lucas's basic story concept, his ideas, and you just get a screenwriter. Yeah, well, I, I actually read somewhere that like so George Lucas when he wanted to make the prequels, he went to like uh like Irving Kirshner. And uh, all the other people that had worked on the original with him, uh, the, the writers and the directors and Lawrence Kasdan and everything like that, and all of them said, George, this is your time. You go ahead and do this. <laughs> they just didn't want to fucking do it. I think that's what it was. <laughs> uh, but basically, one concept survived, which was Luke Skywalker living as a recluse and training a female Jedi. And George Lucas's version, her name's Kira. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I thought this one was funny. Laura Dern, um, I guess every time she was shooting her blaster, she said, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and apparently, you can notice her mouth saying pew in one of the close-up shots. Oh, shoot. I, I, I wish, didn't see that. but I wish I'd known that. I would have looked that. for it now. Yeah. It's around an hour and a half in the movie. So if you ever want, if you want to go back right now and then... And, <laughs> and then report back in. Joaquin Phoenix turned the role down that eventually went to Benicio Del Toro. Good for you, Joaquin. I, I, you know, I would have liked to seen Joaquin Phoenix in that role. Joaquin just doesn't feel like a franchise guy to me. No, but Benicio del Toro ain't coming back either. No, <laughs> he doesn't. He he gets away safe at the end from yeah. that whole thing, right? Uh, he's such a pointless character. He, 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 I do love it. the idea that he's like he's this like backstabbing, scheming bad guy, and then he just gets away safe. Ron Johnson's original cut of the film exceeded three hours. Wow. They cut 45 minutes. Basically, I wonder. Have you seen the uh, deleted scenes on this? No. Well, there's a deleted scene where they fucked up in the movie because he says he's, Luke says he's going to teach her three lessons. And he doesn't only teaches her two. He only teaches her two. There is a scene where Ray notices a ship docking near the village of caretakers on Oct 2. Luke tells her that it is a party of marauders that raid the place once a month. He urges her not to intervene, explaining that it is part of the balance between good and bad that the Jedi are supposed to respect. Ray ignores him and goes to the rescue, only to find out that the Marauders are a different tribe that have simply come to party. Luke admits that he wants to test her, and he believes that the galaxy is in more urgent need of Ray's willingness to take action than the Jedi way of keeping balance. Yeah, it sounds like a good scene to cut. Uh, anything more with Luke and Ray, I, I welcome. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. I've actually seen the scene. It, I mean, it's kind of silly, but 
I don't know. I, I would have had cut cut more of the resistance shit, and I would have taken <laughs> more of that. I would agree. If 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 you would cut some of the resistance shit and put that in, I'm in. Ryan Johnson, he was offered the chance to direct the next film, Episode Nine, which would become The Rise of Skywalker, but he turned them down because of the film's tight production schedule. And then Lucasfilm offered him a three picture deal to create his own trilogy. I don't think this trilogy is happening. And I say that because I think Disney basically tried to backtrack in the next movie, Rise of Skywalker. And they, I think they're fully aware of the, how polarizing this movie was. I just don't think it's going to happen personally. Well, we'll see. I, I think he needs to just do, he just needs to do uh, more Daniel Craig uh, detective movies. That's my opinion. Or maybe a detective movie set in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. See, uh, there, there you go. You're hooked now. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy Ridley turned down the role of Lara Croft in Tomb Raider due to her commitment to this movie. Uh, what's it called? I have a weird Daisy Ridley fact. Oh, okay. What is it? Uh, so one of Daisy Ridley's first roles is in one of my favorite uh, British sitcoms. I've, okay, what's the British sitcom? Uh, it's called Toast of London. Okay. Uh, it's a really great um, British sitcom starring uh, Matt Berry. Did you ever watch uh, IT Crowd? Or I've heard of it. Uh, well, he's a really good British uh, comedic actor. And in this, he plays a... What's it called? He plays a, a, a like dramatic actor who's not very good. Uh, and she's in an episode of Toast of London from 2013. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it was like one of like her first things. And she's in it for two seconds. She literally plays like a, like a stagehand standing on the side of the stage as he enters. That's awesome. I'll have to check yeah. that out. Yeah, uh, it's really good. It's all on Netflix. If you want here's to the thing. It. I didn't hate the Tomb Raider movie. I, actually I never liked saw it. it. Alicia, what's her name? Alicia Vikander? Yeah. Later. From, I think uh, Daisy Ex would have, I think, Oh, right? yeah. With Ex starring, Machina starring Donald with Gleason and Oscar, Oscar Isaac. <laughs> I here's the thing. I I think she would have been good for that, but I get it. You're gonna pick Star Wars over uh, Tomb Raider. Weird uh, Ex Machina side story here. Um, I was once gonna do an improv team with someone, and we learned the dance from the dance scene in Ex oh, Machina. I do love that scene. That's oh, so good. He is. He's good in that movie, Oscar Isaac. Yeah, he's good in a lot of things. He's a good actor. Just does, like yeah. this role is just a nothing role. Exactly. Do you think oh. maybe? Do you think maybe they were like because he came back and said, "Don't kill my character." They were like, "Oh, we're not gonna kill your character." We're just going to give you nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. Like, yeah, it feel, that feels right to me. Mark Hamill has stated in interviews that he had already discussed ideas for Luke Skywalker with Colin Trevorrow, the original director of Star Wars Episode Nine, before making The Last Jedi. Hamill later claimed that Trevorrow's ideas for Luke were more similar to his own than they were with Ryan Johnson and that more would be revealed about Luke in the third picture. However, after learning of Johnson's story treatment of for The Last Jedi, most of Trevorrow's ideas could no longer be used. So he stepped down as director and was replaced by J.J. Abrams. Here's the thing. We're going to get to, when we do the episode of Rise of Skywalker, I can't wait to talk about the dual of the script. The dual of the I've no, have script. you read it? I have not, but I've seen videos on it. Have you read it? No, I haven't. It's, that's going to be fun to talk about. I, yeah. I, I think that would have been a better movie. I Last have very one. strong feelings about Rise of Skywalker. I think uh, a piece of shit that I watched for two and a half hours instead would have been a better movie. <laughs> Tom Hardy filmed a scene where he plays a stormtrooper, recognizing Finn while aboard Snoke's ship near the end. At first, it seems as if the stormtrooper is about to blow Finn's cover, but eventually he merely expresses some surprise to see Finn being an officer, thinking he wasn't officer material. So basically, he, the, he was a stormtrooper that was an old buddy of his when he was a stormtrooper. Oh, wow. I've actually seen the scene. Yeah, I'm glad they cut it. <laughs> I love Tom Hardy, though. All right. We got categories, and then we'll wrap this puppy up. Okay. All right, what's your best scene? Oh, best scene has to be the throne room. Uh, every, I think I'm going to have to agree. Everything about that throne room scene from, you know, from the beginning with, with Snoke torturing her to uh, him killing Snoke and then that fight. Uh, there's a um, you might have seen it. There's a meme that's been circulating that talks about the fact that uh, in 
Star Wars Expanded Universe stuff, um, when the Mandalorians, the, the race of people that Boba Fett and Jango Fett are from, uh, fought the Jedi. There was a big war where they fought the Jedi way back in the past of Star Wars. And in that, they talk about the fact that, well, when the Mandalorians fought, fought the Jedi, what they did was, you know, Jedis can reflect blaster bolts. So what the Mandalorians did is they basically made like normal guns with bullets. So if a Jedi tried to stop that bullet, it's just going to turn into molten metal and hit them in the face. Nice. Yeah. And, and the, there, there's, if you look at the expanded universe stuff, there's a lot of things because Jedis are the, really the only people who can use lightsabers because they just don't, they have to be in tune to the force to be able to like twirl this lightsaber and move it without cutting their own hands off and stuff. Uh, but what the rest of the galaxy does is they adapt by coming up with weapons that can fight lightsabers and take out some of the natural, like, like the good things that lightsabers can do and use it against them. And that's one of my favorite things about that scene is the fact that like all of the, the red hooded uh, figures that were circling Snoke, none of them have lightsabers, but they've all got these really cool weapons that are like, like one of like the, the whip there's like oh, the guy with oh, the yeah. whip and the spike and, awesome. like, and he's like, boom. And he just like brings it closer once he locks it into the saber. Like I, I really loved that. And I thought it was a unique scene because it's not something you ever see in the movies, even though it's, it's all over the expanded universe is people fighting lightsabers like in unique and creative ways and having these weapons that are literally built where the only purpose of this is that you could go ahead and fight people that have lightsabers. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that as well. I'll, I, you can make a strong case for the Yoda scene. I really like that scene, but it's ruined when he, you know, shoots lightning down. So I, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd even put that in my second spot for best scene. I think my second spot for best scene would probably be um, when it's really small when Ray finds the Jedi text. And Luke finally like is like, okay, what's your deal? I actually really enjoy that. And then just the button of that with the uh, it's time for the Jedi to end is just like. Oh, that was a goes. great trailer moment, I remember. Yeah. Oh, okay, wait, wait a minute. I, I got this all wrong. When Luke drinks the blue milk. That's my best <laughs> scene. All right. Moving on. I'm still sticking with, I'm still sticking with my answer. <laughs> Worst scene. Oh, the worst, worst scene has yeah. to be when fucking Rose rams his ship and then kisses him and says a cringy line. Uh, for me, for That's me, mine. for me, it's probably uh, the casino, and not and specifically inside of the casino, the um, search for the code breaker, and then they get captured for the parking tickets. Like that whole scene <laughs> is just because it's just like so contrived and annoying and then i also don't get to see justin thoreau do anything beside look fancy and gamble yeah i don't like the canto bite scene really i mean really i don't like anything with the resistance but if i had to pick one it would be the rose fight what we love line it is it that that might be a contender for worst line for me well so transition best quote uh for me probably the best quote uh, is when Luke, so after Luke is talking about the Force and he's saying, you know, the Force doesn't belong to the Jedi, uh, he says, uh, to say if the light dies, if to say that if the Jedi dies, the light dies is vanity. Like, I just, something about that, like the way Mark Hamill presented it and said it is just so, yeah, it was really powerful. That's probably my favorite line. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, my favorite line has to be, I saved you, dummy. That's how we're not, that's how we're going to win. Not fighting what we hate, but saving what we love. I don't think that's your, did you say that's your favorite line? <laughs> no, okay. I'm kidding. No, oh, I, good. I really love, no, that's, fuck that. That's the worst line. Um, no, my, I actually like the whole Yoda speech and, and um, we, what is it? We learn the most from our failures. I think that's, yeah. I, I, I really like that. The greatest teacher is failure. That's my line mm -hmm. in the movie. All right. We, we know the worst line. <laughs> Best unintentional comedic moment. Again, I'm going to go with Rose ramming her ship into fence. 
for oh, I had I had one for best unintentional comedic moment. Um, it was or or Leia floating through space. It's a t- ah, this is really yeah. close for me. It's either Leia floating through space or the awful Rose line. I think for a variety's sake, I'm going to go with Leia floating through space. I did, I did have a, I did have a laugh at. So after the they mutiny and all the guys have Laura Dern and all of her people, Holdo and everything, all at gunpoint. I laughed because she like kicks a vent and it shoots up steam, and I was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That like in this world of Star utter- Wars. <laughs> Where, like, you know, there's, like, all of this advanced technology and all of this. She, like, kicks a vent and it throws up steam. And I, I, I did laugh at that. That might be it for me. All right. Oh, uh, actually, I'd like to change my answer. You can. Shirtless Kylo Ren. Oh, oh how about... Um, that, <laughs> I goes, that? That is the best... Uh, but I saw that on, in the theater. I laughed very hard at that. That's the best impact on... So, uh, um, best impact on pop culture. Oh, that's the Kylo the Ren challenge? Yeah, that yeah. one. Best performance. You can make a strong case for Luke, Mark Hamill, but I'm I, gonna, I have to go with Adam Driver. My, so one of the things I noticed when I watched it this time, which I didn't realize this time because he is so captivating, he's barely in this, Adam Driver. Mm, he's got a... Mm, he, he's no, in it a lot. If you, if you cut out the scenes between him and Ray talking... He's not in this. Like, that was the thing. And he barely, and he doesn't really talk a lot in those scenes. And it's a testament to his ability as an actor that he overshadows so much of what happens in here. He does I would a say, lot with his expressions. Yes. Like, and, and even that movie, the, the last one, the Rise of Skywalker, rewatching that movie, he, rides, he does is fantastic. So much, he does so much with so little. He carries that movie. 100%. I agree. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, agree. I would, so I would probably say for, uh, Best performance. I'm going to go with Mark Hamill on this. That's especially That's knowing, my number two. That's my especially number two. what we knowing behind the scenes about the fact that he basically hated every choice that was made. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Mark Hamill on this. I think he gives I, – I, I was watching it, and I said um, – I was watching it. My mom was watching it with me. And I said, I think there's an alternate universe somewhere where Mark Hamill doesn't do Star Wars and becomes like a well-known dramatic actor. Because he just commits so hard to this, um, admittedly kind of, uh, kind of cliched, kind of dumb character, and he commits so hard to this. And so, yeah, I'm gonna go with Mark Hamill. All right, worst performance. Now, here's the thing: you think I would pick Rose, but I'm gonna pick Donald Gleason because he's a great actor. But Jesus, like he's, Gerald Hux is a clown in this. He, he is he, so over the top. Yeah. He and he's given nothing to do. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go worst performance, and I'm gonna go Oscar Isaac. He's such a good actor. He's, he is. He's fine in the movie, but it's just like his character is annoying. Yeah, and and the thing about it is, is I think he could have maybe done more with the little he had, and especially I'm not I'm not as willing to cut him as much slack because I know he's such a fantastic actor. So yeah, I'm going with worst performance, Oscar Isaac. All right, so. We've reached the end of the episode. Okay. I'm gonna, um, so closing thoughts and ranking or okay. rating. So out of five, how many stars would you give this movie? Uh, I would rank it four. Four I'd out of five. A, okay. Four out of five. And I also want to say that I would rank it out of these three, my favorite one. Oh, I've, out of the new trilogy. Out of the new trilogy. Now, what would you Flash rank it my overall in the whole franchise? Overall in the whole franchise? Second. Really? Yeah. It's Empire one? Empire is one. Yeah. Over a new hope. Really? Over a new hope, yeah. I I I I like how much was tried in this. I like the balls to go and say, Hey, this is a series that is entirely based around very tropey stuff, you know, all, all the all the original Star Wars stuff is just legit just normal hero's journey and i like the fact that ryan johnson went and said i'm gonna circumvent that and in some aspects it really works and in some aspects it doesn't but 
I like seeing big movies try things because a lot of times big movies don't. All right. So for me, I will say, rewatching this again this morning, I still don't really like this movie, but I did like it a lot more. And I think actually before I had watched this today, I actually liked Rise of Skywalker more. Now I think I like this more than Rise of Skywalker. I'm going to go two and a half out of five. It's still very much a mixed bag for me. As we said, everything with Luke and Ray on that island is great. Adam Driver still is the show. Yeah. Everything with him and Ray, fantastic. Especially because they're, they're not together until the end of the movie. Like yeah. they're all acting against nothing both of them and he's just fantastic in that but every time they cut to the resistance i just don't give a (laughs) shit i think this movie meanders i hate that long boring chase through space i just i like finn as a character but i mean it's he has no purpose in this trilogy anymore i never liked poe i think poe should have died in the last one i mean a lot of the new characters they added i just didn't really care for i didn't care for rose I didn't care for Holdo, 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 Admiral, whatever. (laughs) I didn't care for uh, DJ. (laughs) So, yeah, it it remains a mixed bag. And I I think ultimately, you know, we disagree on this. But I do feel like I think a big problem that the movie has is it does kind of wrap up too much. There's a lack of a cliffhanger, in my opinion. I mean, there's not like you look at Empire and it's like, holy shit, Luke Vader's my dad or <laughs> Luke Vader, Darth Vader's <laughs> my father. What do I do? We got to go rescue Han. You know, every trilogy, the second movie, you know, has some sort of cliffhanger. And, and this, is just, this is just kind of a bizarre second uh, act to a trilogy, in, in my opinion. I, I want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, the example that popped in my mind to tell you were, you were wrong about every second movie having a cliffhanger, the dark Knight. the dark Knight is a pretty concise ending for what it is. It wraps up all the threads that they lay out and everything. And the only thing it really sets up is the fact that now Batman is no longer seen as a hero. Well, maybe not, not every trilogy, but I feel like, Look at Back to the Future trilogy, like second one had a cliffhanger, The Matrix. I mean, these aren't the best movies, but like, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean even. Here's also the other thing that, that, you know, I'm thinking about when I think about trilogies, the difference, because when you said Back to the Future, Back to the Future is all Zemeckis. Like well, it's all, true. it's one, it's one person that is telling a story across the trilogy instead of what Disney ended up doing with this, where it was three independent directors with no overarching kind of idea. Well, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I, I do. I do want to say one thing though, <laughs> regarding, uh, so you said it wraps up too much. I want to say that I agree with you that it wraps up a lot, but what I think it does is it, by wrapping up the stuff that it does, it forced whoever was coming afterwards to come up with something new instead of just rehashing old ideas. I'll buy that. I just, yeah, yeah, I think ultimately this movie was a disappointment to me. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other things to say. Um, I, I I said, it's, I don't think it's a bad movie. Like I am putting this on the record. I think this is a good movie. That's my last note that I have written is good movie. If I were to rank this, so for me, Empire 1, mm. New Hope 2, 3, I'm going to go Return of the Jedi. That movie's got flaws, but I really like it. 4, Force Awakens. 5, Revenge of the Sith. 6, Solo. And then 7, Return of the Jedi. Eight, I would go. You said Return of the Jedi twice. Or uh, the Last Jedi. <laughs> uh, eight would be holy shit. I forget. Oh, okay. Eight would be Rogue One. Nine would be Rise of Skywalker, and I think ten would be Attack of Clones, and one would be Phantom Menace. Yeah. I. I yeah. Originally, I had I had Rise of Skywalker higher, but I, I do think this. I will say. You know, 
this movie's not entirely successful, but it does feel more of like a filmmaker's vision Mm -hmm. as opposed to force awakens, which is just kind of a Hollywood studio think tank. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. This was a long one. Yeah. How it's, I, I, you know what? I think I'm going to split this episode into two. Ooh. Yeah. Fun. I I, I get, I get two weeks. Yeah. You might. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to do two. Okay. Cause this is like, two hours right now yeah i looked at the time like like 30 minutes ago and i was like holy shit. yeah i i was really planning on this being like uh like an hour maybe and <laughs> it's star wars so there is a lot to talk about but maybe an hour and a half but yeah uh this will probably be a two-parter i think okay so all right matt as always a pleasure yeah this was a lot of fun that's a wrap thanks for listening and we'll see you next week bye bye 